Hey team, I wanted to make a video today on how to do long runs for marathon training because I do get a lot of questions and I also get a lot of input from you all as well on how varying up the paces of your long runs has assisted you and really helped you out. You know, it was really awesome to hear there was a uh, an athlete that reached out to me who said he had a PR of 308 for the marathon, went out and ran a 256 this past weekend in Columbus um, by utilizing very paced long runs and I discussed this particular strategy is because it helped me improve from 2 hours 43 minutes and 36 seconds down to 2 hours 19 minutes and 35 seconds for the marathon so I know that not just running slow and easy every single weekend is going to start to really help you uh, as you prepare for your marathons because you're not just building endurance but you're building that strength and stamina that you need to run a great marathon. You cannot just go out and run long, slow, easy long runs every single weekend and expect to get a really high return on your investment because you're you're building stamina, but at the same time you're not developing that, that speed development and being able to sustain pace more efficiently over a long period of time. And examples of the types of long runs I'm talking about is uh, say you're an athlete that's trying to run, uh, say around 236 for the marathon, just for example. I mean, that's six minute mile pace. So the way I would do it and the way I was doing it prior to breaking two hours and 20 minutes was I would do like a two mile warm up and then run uh, 16 miles of that 20 miler, just for example, a 20 miler at 160 beats per minute. When I was at my fittest, I was hitting anywhere from 525 to 550 per mile pace at 160 beats per minute wearing a heart rate monitor. And that was when I, I ran 219.35 when I was 31. Uh, I ran uh, 226.42 for the marathon when I was 35. I ran 232.55 when I was 37 at the 2013 Mon uh, California International Marathon. So it's been many, many years since I ran my last marathon. I'm actually planning on um, uh, uh, focusing on a new marathon that I have in mind for next year and so it's been many many years but I'm gonna utilize the same exact strategy the reason being is you yes going out and running long slow easy long runs is gonna make you very strong uh, physiologically you're gonna be very strong mentally because you're you're used to being on your feet for a long period of time but and it's going to build that endurance that you need in the marathon distance. But if you're trying to run a specific time, you have to get that marathon race pace to feel more moderate and not so aggressive. And, and to be able to really maintain effort and preferably pick up the pace in the last 10 kilometers of your marathon. You have to teach the body to burn fat at race pace rather than burning carbohydrate. You, we all have very little amounts of carbohydrate storage in the body, but we have an enormous amount of fat storage. So if you're doing that one VO2 max workout a week where you are doing uh, running at you know anywhere from 30 seconds to even up to a, like a minute faster than your goal marathon race pace for those intervals, you know whether those are repeat 800s, repeat one miles, repeat Ks on the track, um, if you're doing the VO2 max workouts, you're extending out the amount of time you're spending at your anaerobic threshold. Uh, that too is going to uh, help improve your lactate tolerance and that is the key. You're not going to improve lactate tolerance by running easy long runs for training for marathons. Okay. What I want to also stress is there's still a place for easy long runs, easy relaxed pace long runs as well. The way I set it up in the training plans and in the running courses that I teach is we alternate. So we run a harder varied pace long run one weekend followed the next week by a very relaxed, easy long run so that you recover from that hard anaerobic workout. Because without question, the hardest workout I did prior to breaking 220 was the long run. It wasn't my, it wasn't track sessions. Uh, and I did some very, very hard uh, track workouts, you know, anywhere like 16 times 200 meters at like 28 to 29 seconds with um, 60 seconds rest repeat miles anywhere from 444 to 447 at 6400 feet uh, with uh, anywhere from a minute to minute to two minutes rest. I've done a lot of difficult workouts just as you have, but 
it, it, it was the long run that was the most difficult for me. I mean, examples of some of the types of long runs I was doing, uh, you know, prior to running 219 was <laughs> I would do stuff like, and, and working with uh, Lisa Rainsberger, who was the 1985 Boston Marathon champion, was great too. Um, getting that type of mindset of, of a Boston Marathon champion and working with the, the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program that I was a part of um, was huge. It was monumental for me. <clears throat> but I got beyond that. I knew that for me to improve from 243.36 to qualify for the 2008 USA Olympic Trials and to earn a B standard time, which for me, my goal was to break two hours and 22 minutes, I had to start varying up the paces of my long runs. Examples of the types of uh, workouts I would do would you know, be like a 20 miler where I would do five miles easy, five miles at um, anywhere from 525 to 550 per mile pace, then five miles easy, four miles at 530 mile pace, uh, with that last mile run at under five minute mile pace. Or I would do say a, um, a 20 miler where every fourth mile I would drop a sub five minute mile in the middle of the long run. And then just you know drop a sub five minute mile, relax, run 630s for a couple miles, you know run a 520, relax for a few miles, drop a sub five minute mile. It's those types of varied pace efforts where you're running at much harder efforts than anaerobic threshold effort. You're running very relaxed. You're running at anaerobic threshold effort where it's more around um, around 20 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds faster or slower than, than goal race pace. Just varied. It's going to vary from each athlete. Um, doing those types of workouts helped me tremendously to get to a point where I could hold 519 mile pace for 26.2 miles. It was not an overnight process, so don't expect it to be easy. Uh, but don't start doing these types of long runs until you have built your stamina, you've built, your, you've built a strong foundation of easy, relaxed mileage first. Because you're not going to go into doing these types of long runs uh, unless you have, have some kind of anaerobic capability first. You want an, an aerobic ability. You've built that base of mileage, and then as you get fitter, then you start introducing these very paced efforts. Um, and and B, uh, you know, and another thing that's 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 great is, and I think is very important, is that you focus on your personal development. That's the reason why I created those training plans on the running courses is because I want the athletes that I coach online or that I mentor online um, to have a better understanding of why they're doing the workouts, how fast they need to be doing the workouts, what type of volume they should be doing, and how fast they should be running on those anaerobic threshold efforts or how slow they should be running on their easy days. The problem I'm seeing a, a lot of times with athletes because I've made the mistake too, is running far too fast on easy days and running too slow on your planned hard workouts. You're still not stressing the body efficiently enough and for a long enough period of time in order to get the result you're looking for. And, and so a lot of athletes can hold marathon race pace for a certain amount of time but then they start to slow down. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons for sure is finding out what percentage of your weekly volume are you training at near or far below goal race pace because if you're running too many miles too slow for for too long enough you know a long enough period of time you're just building endurance you're you're still very physiologically fit but you're not improving your lactate tolerance you have to become very efficient at clearing lactate lactic acid fashion that's building up and you're not going to get that physiological benefit and adaptation unless you start changing up how you're setting up your long runs and I think it's important to uh, keep that that type of mindset and that philosophy in mind in order for you to really start making those huge gains and setting those big PRs in your marathon races hydration is key if you're not practicing that in training you need to start immediately start putting those water bottles out every three miles or every 5k uh, if you know the course um, focus on drinking rather than sipping. Watch your pace early on in the marathon too. You're not going to win a marathon being the first athlete over the half marathon point unless you have the motivation and confidence to sustain that effort throughout the race. It's better to be conservative, aggressive getting out, but be conservative in the early stages of your marathon rather than 
going out way too hard and just blowing up in the, in the latter stages. If you're gonna if you're gonna make a big move and and do a, a positive split, you know, going out faster than than you come back in, have the confidence to do it, but don't make that type of move unless you've done your homework in training. You have to be very very strong anaerobically, uh, mentally tough in order to do that type of um, tactic. When I ran 219.35, I went out 107.09 the first half and came back with a 112.26. My personal best for the half to this day is 107.06. So I went out three seconds slower than my personal best for the half marathon. And I had another 21.1 kilometers, another 13.1 miles to go. So it, it, it was a huge risk on my part in order to um, make that move. But if you have the confidence and you've done the work, then you can do that. And you also, if you go out faster than that, then you have a little bit of a buffer time, you know, in order to come back a little bit slower. But usually the better route is to do a negative split, you know, go out in a 130 if you're trying to break three hours and then run a 125 and then you got a 255. So I hope this, this topic on long runs and at least, you know, helps you out and at least gives you some ideas of what you need to be thinking about for your next build up for your marathon. All my training plans and my running courses um, are, the running courses are you and I working together. Basically it's more, to, you know, in person mentoring over, over video. And at the end of those courses, we have the training plans where we cover the exact workouts you need to be doing, uh, why you need to be doing them. It's much more hands-on and, 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 and much more um, in-depth than just buying a training plan. But the training plans are great too in terms of knowing how many kilometers a week you need to be doing or how many miles a week you need to be doing. Um, every fourth week on the training plans we uh, have a recovery week so you're making sure that you're recovered from the hard workouts you're doing. Uh, but in order to run a great marathon, you have to do a lot of things correctly. It's not just the long run. So don't think that just doing faster paced, very paced long runs is going to get you to the finish line in record time. It's certainly going to prepare you better than just doing your track sessions, doing your tempo runs each week, and then do a, a, a long run of you know anywhere from whatever, 10, eight miles to, to 24 miles in length. It's, it's putting all the pieces together so that you get the highest return on your investment and, and you get to the start line in, you know, in, in great shape, physical shape, and great mental shape, uh, and then getting to the finish line in record time. So if you have any other questions about the long runs, any other um, questions in regards to what I was doing, or any, any other topic you'd like me to cover, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I love hearing from you all, uh, whether you're training for the marathon or whatever, whatever event you're, you're going after. Um, just hearing how your training is going uh, fires me up and uh, just getting comments from you all, uh, you know, the community out there, uh, you all are driven, motivated, disciplined athletes and I respect all of you whether you're a beginner or you are a, a sub 223 athlete or for the marathon, you know, we got a 222 guy out there, Judson, this guy's awesome too, so uh, got athletes of all capabilities that, uh, that comment, so respect to you all for what you're doing. I uh, wish you all the best in your upcoming races in, in late 2021 uh, into 2022. And uh, definitely, if you're going to run a marathon, some of the top recommended marathons in terms of fast courses I would recommend is Rotterdam, Columbus, Chicago, um, California International, where I ran through 1935. I don't, I, I would, it, it's fast in some cases. It's, it's a lot, it's, there's a lot of rolling hills on it. There's a couple sharp downhills at the one mile mark and at the 10 mile mark but I don't consider that course a fast course. Even though it's a net downhill gradual, at, at, you know, if you look at the layout, it does show a net downhill. I would go for uh, a fast time on a faster course. In my opinion, I think um, Monumental Indianapolis Marathon is held in November. It's always cool uh, time of year, great course. Um, I ran that in um, 2011, finished fifth in 226.42. So I highly recommend that course. The, the staff there are outstanding as well. Um, but Find a course that's fast, that's flat. Uh, obviously, no course is fast unless you are in great shape. So start utilizing very paced long runs in your marathon preparation. Do a 10-day taper rather than a three-week taper. Start dropping your volume and your intensity 10 days out rather than three weeks out. I, I guarantee you're probably going to get much better results with doing a 10-day taper rather than a three-week taper. So I uh, wish you guys and gals all the very best, and I will talk to you all in the next video.